Welcome to Weird OS Wednesday, a long and storied tradition that I've just made up. And today we're installing the original version of Arch Linux from 2002. It's retro computing on hard mode, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy reliving computer history in weird and unusual ways, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. The long and storied tradition of Arch Linux began way back in 2001, when Canadian programmer Judd Vinay said to a friend, by the way, and then had nothing to follow it up with. So he put down his guitar, picked up a keyboard, and created history. The first official release of Arch Linux was on March 11th, 2002. And you know, the Arch Linux of today has a bit of a reputation of being not for beginners or a difficult distribution, which I think is totally unwarranted. The Arch Wiki and Installation Guide offer a wonderfully educational walkthrough where you not only get a rock solid install of Arch, but you'll learn a little bit about how Linux works along the way. If you have even a cursory interest in Linux or how computers work, Try giving a modern Arch Linux install a try. But was this the case back in 2002, when the very first Arch hit the interweb with the promise of lean, no frills Linux? So I'm pretty sure this thing doesn't have a hard drive in it, so we'll have to take care of that. Uh, yes, there is our lovely slotted Pentium 2. I think it's 366. And this motherboard is actually pretty interesting. This whole section here is just not populated. There's empty pads for chips and passive components and all sorts of stuff. I wonder what else this board was used for. And yeah, this weird crevice here is where the hard drive is supposed to go. Kind of weird, but okay. I've got my bin of random IDE hard drives here. Let's see, IBM Desk Star, sure. 40 gigabytes, pretty good. Slot that in there. Might as well get a couple of screws. All right, I'm gonna leave the top off for now in case we need to peek inside at the cards during install. But I'm gonna pair this with a very nice IBM PS2 keyboard and a PS2 laser mouse because, well, it's just pleasant to use. And my favorite ISO monitor. All right, first let's go into the BIOS and make sure this is set to boot from CD-ROM. All right, boot. And we'll set CD-ROM to be first. And then we'll just pop in the Arch 0.1 ISO. And F10, save and exit. Oh, there's Lilo. We are booting into Linux. Oh good, it sees the hard drive. Oh, look at that, booting Arch Linux 0.1. Amazing. Oh, well, here we go. All right, so we can log in as root to begin the installation. And then install instructions are available in the system while we're installing if we switch to another terminal. And I am going to do that. No mail, Oh, The other thing I'm gonna do is reference a GitHub gist I found, which is, well, how to install Arch Linux 0.1 to a GUI in a VM. Of course, we're not doing it in a VM, we're doing it on real hardware, but that gist will be handy for getting us into a graphical X Windows environment. Anyway, if we do Alt and then an F key, we can switch between different terminals. So I'm gonna do that so I can have the arch install instructions open. So I'm gonna do vi arch install.txt. So here we are, the instructions. And if I hit uh, Alt F1, back to where we're actually gonna do the install, and I can switch back and forth. Okay, so a few things are left out in the official arch instructions here. If I go, fdisk l I can see the partitions on the disk in the system. So we'll need to do fdisk dev disks disk zero disk. We will delete that partition. We'll add a new 
primary partition. This will be the swap partition. So we will make this uh, plus 128 megs. And then a new partition for our install, which will be just the whole rest of the thing. And then we need to toggle a bootable flag here. So A, partition two. All right, that seems good. Make that first partition swap. And then I wanna make a file system. And we have makefs.extended2. So let's use extended2 on the other partition for our install. By the way, if you enjoy this kind of content and you have the means, I do have a Patreon linked down in the description below. The generous support of patrons and channel members ensures I can continue to fill my house with unusual and impractical e-waste. Yeah, see, this isn't so bad. Aside from the quality of the instructions improving greatly over the years, it's the same kind of process. All right, so now we need to mount the partition to mount and then initialize Pac-Man, so let's do that. We just need to create that pacman.db file, not a whole directory. Okay, and now we just have to run this install world on mount, which is kind of like the modern pack strap. So install world slash MNT. Check it out, we're installing stuff. All right, pacman a r slash mnt installing this file system package. Could not extract user share man is a directory. I mean, I think it's installed. Okay, now we're going to extract the Linux kernel source, compile it and install it. Make dir slash p mount user source cd mount user source and then tar zx df linux 2.4.18 so yeah <laughs> quite an old kernel obviously all right time to ch root in yeah there is our source code for the linux kernel and now we can do make menu config and this will give us a very nice menu driven configuration for building the linux kernel yep there we go so going to the github gist uh it wants us to use riser fs uh, i don't like riser fs so we can skip that code maturity level options okay prompt Right, we need slash dev file system support automatically mount at boot. All right, now let's build this kernel. So make dep and look at it compile. Compile in the kernel. What is my life? Clock skew detected. Your build may be incomplete. That's probably fine. All right, we are almost there. Now let's just double check Lilo, which is the bootloader. Yeah, that looks correct. That's our disk, disk zero slash disk. All right, now we run the Lilo command. Uh, added arch, I think we're good. Now let's edit F stab. Change our root password. Something nice and secure, and definitely not just the word action. And I believe if we reboot now, we should boot into Arch Linux 0.1. All right, disk is out. Hopefully we will see Lilo appear. Oh, look at that. Lilo boot menu, automatically booting into Arch. Oh yeah, it worked! Look, we're booting off the hard drive. Yes! Oh my goodness, look at that. We are booted into Arch Linux 0.1. Oh, no mail. All right, cut the jazz. It's time to get gooey. 
All right, it is command line CD-ROM drive time. So mount the CD-ROM drive to slash MNT. And then from the CD-ROM, we're going to install xfree86. And then run LD config. Now here's where we may need to peer inside the machine. We're gonna run xf 86 config and this is going to ask us a bunch of questions about our hardware. Okay, let's figure out what the mouse device is. I believe it's going to be dev PSAUX and we can test this in kind of a funny way. We can follow the file at dev PSAUX and if little stuff comes up there when we move the mouse around, yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's where our mouse is, and it's detected. All right. Control C out of here. Now, this has been uh, all kinds of messed up. Let's restart. Linux straight from the void. Let's try this again now that we know where the mouse is. So, PS2 mouse, no three buttons, and dev PSAUX. Choose the keyboard. Uh, now we have to set specifications for the monitor, which we're just going to guess. All right, so we're gonna go SVGA 800 by 600. Uh, vertical sync range, we're gonna guess number one. Uh, do we wanna look at the video card database? Yes, this is where we have to peek into the system here. All right, let's look in here for ATI Rage Pro. Bunch of ATI, ATI Rage 128 seems to be the closest match. All right, at this point, we should be able to run Start X and boot into a graphical environment, assuming that our settings are correct. Hey, it's where, oh my God, it worked. Oh, something's uh, not quite right with it. <laughs> Maybe we need to do SVGA. All right, after a little bit of tinkering with the modes in uh, the config there, we have X Windows. It is uh, TWM, of course, which is <laughs> quite minimalistic, but there are some other options on here. There's Window Maker, which is probably what we're gonna go with because Window Maker is the next step interface, but let's see if they have anything else in here. Uh, let's see, there's no GNOME. No KDE. No XFCE. Pac-Man. A. Window Maker. Okay, now we need to change our X init RC, which is, doesn't exist actually. So we'll make it. And then in here, we just need to do exact W maker. Let's see if I did that correctly because I'm doing that from memory. Nope, I did it wrong. Oh no, we need to install more stuff. We're missing dependencies and I don't know how to install dependencies correctly. Let's do pacman slash a lib tiff. Okay, doing dependencies manually. Hey, oh, it's glorious. Look at it. Look at it, it is Window Maker in all of its wondrous glory in Arch Linux 0.1. Oh, we did it. We did it. And we have Mozilla on the CD-ROM 0.9.8. Can we launch it? No, we need these libraries too, okay. There's probably some way to do the dependencies automatically but I'm not really a computer guy, so I don't know. Hey, look at that, we have <laughs> Mozilla. What a beautiful web browser this is. Look at that, we are not online, of course. I don't know if we're gonna get into configuring networking. Do we have if config, we do, and it does not see the network card in here. So I guess we're not going online unless I find a supported network card. Yeah, look at that. This is literally all of the packages we have available to us from the CD. 
Not a whole lot here in 0 0.1, but hey, it's enough to get going. So that's Arch Linux 0 0.1. Pretty interesting to relive the rather humble beginnings of a distro that would go on to become a behemoth. And that's a really cool thing about Linux, I think, in general. One person can have an interesting idea, and if it catches on in the community, more people will join in and the idea grows until it becomes, well, unstoppable. In any event, if you have any interesting, obscure, or weird operating systems that you'd like to see me try to install on real hardware, let me know down in the comments below. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrut K Mods, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics and who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.